check this guy out. Ooh, that's a one gram gold nugget. This right here is gonna go to you, hopefully. I'll explain that in a little bit. Hold on, let me jog your memory. Anyways, it's been a little while, but since the last video where we found those, you know, 20 gold nuggets, uh, this channel had almost a thousand subscribers. So from that point to this point, right now, today, the channel has reached over 3,000 subscribers. So, to celebrate, I got a little something for you. All right, guys, welcome back. Or if you're new, don't worry, because everybody else is. Uh, it's a brand new channel. My name is Brad, this is Wheelie Shiny Gold. I am super excited. I am super excited about this day. I've been waiting for this day. So today, we're gonna be doing a lot of gold prospecting. Don't mind the helicopter. They're not looking for me yet. So today, it's gonna be windy and it's gonna be hot, but we're gonna do quite a few things. I'm gonna be looking for this area that I stumbled across that was been totally undiscovered. It's, I think it was missed by the old timers. There's a massive quartz blowout, great indicator for gold, especially in this area. So this place that I'm trying to find, okay, so there's one problem, is that I don't remember exactly where it is, but I'm gonna find it. And as a matter of fact, it cost me about 105 bucks to fill up half my tank just to get here. So I'm not leaving without finding gold. If I find one speck of gold there, it's gonna be pretty significant. So we're gonna prospect for gold, that entire area, we're gonna look for gold. We're gonna be prospecting then, and hopefully it turns into gold mining. So anyways, this guy right here, I don't know how to give it away. I don't know what I should do. And what I really want is for you to leave a comment and let me know what you think I should do with this one gram nugget as far as getting it to you. Give me some ideas on how we can give this guy away. Should I, you know, put something in the video where you gotta find it, like like right over there, something like that, or something different? You know, I love feedback, so let me know. And just keep this in mind, nobody from this channel is gonna reach out, so watch out for scammers. All the information will be left in the description of this video. And then what I'll do is I'll take those ideas that you give me, and I'll put it up for a vote, up on the community page. And then in the next video, that's when we'll go ahead and do it. So the first step right now is to go back and retrace my steps and try to try to locate that spot that looked amazing and then do some gold prospecting. Hopefully that turns into gold mine. So this is gonna be a lot more challenging than uh, I had anticipated. I never understood how somebody can lose such a great spot and then simply forget where it was. I didn't have signal to mark it or GPS locator or whatever. So hopefully we can get there. Normally what you would do is you would work these washes, all right? And you would check for gold. And then you follow the gold all the way up to the source. Um, in this case, I was just kind of wandering around with a metal detector. That's definitely backwards, don't do that. <clears throat> but I was just having fun, you know how that goes. A lot of the gold deposits in this area are in the sp This one just decided to break loose. Let's see if I can get it. Of quartz, the quartz veins, right? Not the big quartz. Oh, uh, check this out. Huh. It's like a little waterfall right there, if there's ever rain. But anyways, what we're looking for is a massive blowout of quartz. That's where a lot of the gold deposits came up. All right, so I haven't found my spot yet. Um, getting kind of worried if I'm gonna be able to find it or not, but um, 
I did get a target just wandering around. So we'll check it out real quick. Could be a piece of lead. There it is known for lead. I hate this scoop. Wow, it's a piece of tin foil. That's weird. Okay, keep an eye on these, will you? Those are my keeper rocks. I don't know what's in them yet. Okay, there's another keeper rock. Take those back and crush them. Man, that is rich. Are you sure, gold monster? Never be too sure. Okay, I think I finally found it. I went all the way around the other mountain. I have no idea why, but finally found it. See that little uplift right here? Right there, in between here and here. I don't want to expose too much because the spot was totally undiscovered. Okay, let's take a look at this guy right here. You see how it's a dead center? See, this guy's dead center, right? And if you come over here, you got a little wash that comes down on this side right here. And then, if you go over to this side, you got another one right here. And a couple different types of rocks in between. But this isn't the most exciting part about this place. I mean, yeah, of course you got you got your float right here, right? Now this is what kind of led me to this because whenever you see this big bull course like this a float right here, that means there's usually a bigger blowout up top. So that's where we want to go. We want to keep going and see where that leads us. So what I want to do today is offer you, you know, my perspective in the area in which I'm hunting for gold, okay? So I'm going to be metal detecting for gold and this is what I'm looking for. That's not necessarily what you should be looking for, but this is what I'm looking for in this specific area with a metal detector. You see these fractures here? A lot of these, I'm looking for what's been blown out or rolled down from the mountain at this point. And then what I'll do is I'll even lift up some of these rocks and hit it with a metal detector or go up to one of these outcroppings or these, these dikes here. And you see all those little tiny fractures? I'll use a metal detector for this. And at some point, what I'll do is I'll get samples. So that's what I'm looking for right now with just the metal detector. Today, it's gonna to be a little bit back asswards. All right, primarily what you wanna do is use your gold pan, um, use a classifier, and look for black sand, stuff like that. I'm doing a little bit different today. I'm gonna to go to a spot where I think there might be gold, based on the research that I've done in this area, the gold that I found in this area, and then I'm gonna get down to bedrock. And then I'm gonna get samples from that bedrock, from quartz stringers, and then bring it back, either crush some samples, then pan it out, or get the surrounding dirt from an outcropping, uh, and then pan that out and see if there's any gold. Okay, if you can see right up here, you see, if you notice the rocks here, over time they've broken off and they started sliding down this hill, right? Right into that wash right here. That's why you should always 
pan over here first to see if any of the gold is broken free. Get down to the bedrock and see if there's any free mill gold over there. But today, since I'm cheating and doing it a little bit backwards, this is just because I'm specifically offering you my perspective on when I go metal detecting, metal detecting only, especially with the Gold Monster 1000. So if you notice, I'm in full auto too. And the reason why I'm in full auto too right now is because I'm looking for something that's a little bit bigger that could be a little bit deeper. And if I really need to pinpoint something that this chirps at a li just a little bit, then what I'll do is I'll take it to full, I'll dig a little bit deeper and then I'll go ahead and I'll, what, what is that guy? What, get out of here. I'll go full auto too, just because it gives you a little bit more depth. And then if it makes a signal, I'll dig until the signal gets bigger. And if I lose it, then what I'll do is I'll go to full manual. And since the manual option here is a lot more sensitive, you have the possibility of this picking something up smaller than full auto too because it's going to be your 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 full manual is going to be the most sensitive full auto two is going to be going to give you the most depth that this can offer you which isn't much more i'm going to switch to manual full auto right here is a perfect example of what i'm talking about you see these little stringers inside here? You see these guys, these lines? That's where the gold travels in the area that I'm in. And that's why right now I'm using a metal detector because I'm looking for the source of the gold. I'm not just looking to find uh, plaster gold nuggets down the river. You know, this is a very unique area. And um, if you look at the records, very inconsistent. Um, this can be a very spotty area, very hit and miss area. So. Uh, using a metal detector in this hard pack and stringer, uh, quartz stringer veins is a very good option for gold prospecting. Still, there is gold, you know, uh, in the dry riverbeds here that have broken off over these stringers over time. But I'm looking for where the gold is coming from. I want the source. That's the whole point of doing this is I'm looking for the source gold. I'm looking for the pocket looking for a rich vein of rich pocket and that's why i'm out here here's another thing about this area too or if you're ever searching for uh an area that has pocket gold or or quartz stringers that have uh, gold deposits sometimes if you're going to be metal detecting anyways sometimes if you're metal detecting let's say this way it might sound like a hot rock but it's still going off on you right but you can turn 90 degrees You can actually start getting a reading at some spots. So that's why the, the rule of thumb here is if you get something or you hear something from your detector, you turn another 90 degrees. It's not just to zone in on that target and pinpoint it. Sometimes if you're hunting for gold with a metal detector, especially where the gold has been deposited in quartz stringers, if you get a signal, then what you wanna do is you wanna turn around 90 degrees and do it again, scan it again, scan the ground again, and then dig a couple inches at a time if you're prospecting for gold with a metal detector in areas like this. All right, I'm gonna work on this area, see if there's anything that can come up of it. Okay, so I'm gonna go in full auto two. So the signal is kind of there, it's a little bit faint. I've already dug down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try a more sensitive mode, which is gonna be full manual, right? And you wanna ground balance it, of course. But right here is where I'm specifically wanting to target anyway. So I wanna see if there's actually gonna be something there. And this may give me a better idea if I can pinpoint one spot manual. It's still giving me that target right there, but it seems like it's deep. I just switched to auto two. And auto two will give you a little bit more depth. It could be a hot rock. It's still not telling me what the machine thinks it is.
So I was able to identify where that uh, signal was coming from. And it's this little tiny root. It still had some moisture in it, although everything out here is dead right now. And so that's how sensitive these are. And whenever I'm metal detecting for gold, uh, hunting down the source of gold, you're always looking for the faintest of targets, right? Now there's a lot of guys that will dual wield these metal detectors and they're really good at it. <laughs> and I give them a lot of credit, you know, like a GPZ 7000 or a GPX 6000. And then on the other hand, they'll have a gold monster to pinpoint it and stuff. That's crazy. That's to me, that's crazy. Uh, because it takes a lot of effort. But, you know, if you don't have one of those super high-end machines and you have Gold Monster, that could be good enough. Because what you want to do is you want to use your primary tool, which is gold prospecting. You want to be able to know what to look for in the area where you're looking. That's why you're out there in the first place. So you do your research, you know that there's going to be gold there, and then you apply your gold prospecting skills, and you can use, you know, if you're going to be metal detecting anyways, you can use that metal detector if it's sensitive enough to get uh, placer gold deposits, placer gold or free mill gold, stuff like that. There's also, uh, you know, people that use the gold monster just primarily to look for black sands and stuff so they can go gold prospecting there. So if you're in an area where you don't have gold deposits coming up through the quartz veins like this, um, still use a metal detector and search for super rich mineralized areas that you're in in order to bring a pan to that spot or a dry washer or bring some samples back with you and you can still use the metal detector as a tool for gold prospecting. These just slid down over time and the gold is trapped in this rock in the stringer veins and those quartz veins. If I only get one rock that has gold on it that's a jackpot right there because I know that whole area could be covered in gold. All I got to do is just search it out. Okay, so when I was out prospecting, kind of exploring, this is what drew me to this area right here. I stumbled across all this float. You see this quartz, this big quartz blowout right here. And what I did is I followed it all the way up, right? And we know that wherever you see a quartz vein like this or an outcropping, you know that they run in parallel, right? Well, I found the other just right here it looks like to be going up this way and you can see that it's it's kind of well it's kind of stuck in there but anyways it's not too uh too mineralized but you can tell that there's you know it has iron staining but but this matches the host rock that i'm looking for and if you see how fractured it is and take a look right here, you can actually see quartz inside this rock here. All those stringers that I was talking about, right? So that's why I think this is a, with all these strong gold indicators, I think that this area here, if I do find a piece of gold, like a specimen, like a big gold specimen or small gold, it doesn't even matter, it can be tiny. Even if I find the smallest, speck of gold here today this has great potential for gold mining i mean that's why we're out here anyways i mean look at this look at all the quartz it's right smack dab in the middle and i'm not concerned with the big guy here this big quartz vein what i'm looking for is the stringers that branch off this is just a big quartz outcropping okay so just consider this to be the trunk and what I'm looking for today are the branches of the trunk because that's what seems to carry a lot of the gold that's what I'm looking for and it is getting hot
So in this case, since I located where the quartz vein is, the main trunk of the quartz, it would be a good idea to look for the next indicator, which is down to this wash here. And then, you know, get try to get down to the bedrock, start metal detecting, and then maybe dig up some samples to bring it back. And then go on the other side and do the same thing. Because there's another tributary dry wash or dry wash in that side too. That's interesting. Doesn't sound like gold. But we might as well double check. All right, we want a hollow sound. That's good. At this point, I'm not finding any gold with the metal detector, so that means I gotta hike back down, find a wash, maybe two, I don't know yet. We'll see, it's starting to get warm. So far, this spot is not working out, but we will see, it always comes back down to the pan. So here's another massive blowout right here, this quartz vein, or this outcropping. It goes all the way down the hill here, Check that out. I wonder if uh, that's an old, an old timer's uh, stake here. Well, where it used to be. And I wonder, if the claim papers are still in there. They usually put them in uh, old cigarette, cigarette or cigar cans, uh, Prince Albert cans, which were metal. This thing would pick it up if it's in there. I've only found one before. Look at this. Look at all that quartz. Anyways, I'll check this area out and see what it holds. All right, I just got a target. Right as I was walking away,
All right. All right, well, I found the target right here. Right there on the magnet. <laughs> Whoops. Totally calculated. I meant to do that. Save myself time. All right, we're gonna have to get dirt another time. I'm running out of time. So I'll be back, but I got two more spots to go look at today. I gotta hurry up. All right, so we're at spot number two. This is the gas money stop. Okay, so we're looking to redeem the amount of money that we spent on gas just to get out here. So we're at the other spot that we were at last time where we were finding all kinds of pickers. I'm waiting on a call right now from Hiroshi to guide me to uh, this other spot that he found. And um, in the meantime, I'm gonna go try to find some gold nuggets to uh, replenish the, uh, the gas money to get out here. So we'll see how we do. Well, by the way, leave a comment and let me know what your ideas are on giving away that one gram gold nugget. Check this out, look how close my truck is, see that? I walked down this little path right here. I marked my target because I got a target, so I marked it just in case. I was going crazy. <laughs> kind of sounds like a BB, but we'll see. Piece of gold, right off the bat. Wow. How did we miss that last time? <laughs> Come on. Need my gas money. There it is. First target. 20 feet away from the truck. Right here. Super tiny, but I'll take it. How small that is. Bet you can't even see it. If I get enough, maybe I can get one gallon of gas. These are the easiest gold nuggets I've ever, I'm, I'm probably ever going to find. And there's a lot of them. All right, maybe I spoke too soon. Yes, third one, it's tiny, you're getting smaller. Hopefully I can get enough gas money. So I'm gonna go up even farther up there and uh, I'm gonna go up to the bedrock where we found that one gram gold nugget. And we're gonna go for another one gram gold nugget or bigger, hopefully, we'll see. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm on my way up there, trust me. You guys know how it is. I couldn't resist, you know?
All right. It's rusty. All right. I just got three more targets. Oh, I'm sorry, four targets that are exactly in the same spot I was just a few weeks ago. I have no idea. I mean, if these are gold nuggets, I mean, my metal detecting was off that day because I was, I was right here just a few weeks ago. Or maybe, you know, it's the sun or, or the heat or something that affects the metal detector differently. I don't know. Have you guys heard that? I have. I heard that the heat can affect the metal detector. Is that true? I don't know. Tell me. How can I miss this target though? I mean, listen to it, you know? Come on, gas money. I really don't like this scoop. Maybe I had two targets in one hand. And then when I found one, I dumped the other. And then I didn't double check, I don't know. And like, how does it keep going up? I mean, what is going on? Am I losing my mind? What is going on? Should be right here. What am I doing? What is going on? Ah. Why can't I find it? Oh, I'm losing my mind. Okay, I got it. Don't let me lose it. The tailings go so deep, that's why. What the heck? Yep. Just sank even lower. Wow. Just keeps sinking. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. Look. Just keeps sinking. Because they stacked all these rocks here. Just keeps getting lower and lower and lower. This is, I mean, geez, what the heck? Target number two real quick. Then come back to target number one and, and see what I can do about it. Hopefully this one doesn't, doesn't sink on me either. Don't you sink on me. Gotcha. Going nowhere. Except for in my bottle. That doesn't sound good. A piece of machine. Damn. Okay, I got them all. Target one, lead. Target two, hot rock. Three and four, hot rock. And then a piece of some metal. I don't know. It's definitely not gold. One of the most underrated gold prospecting tools. <laughs> on the market this thing cost me about eight dollars and it's just awesome this is the same spot where i found that first gold nugget a couple videos ago same spot like inches away maybe if that and i'm already getting another and i don't know if it's gold or what yet but I mean, this is inches away, inches away. I don't know if I'll be happier or ashamed. There's no way that's a gold nugget. Either way, it's a target and I didn't get it last time. Yep, it looks like a piece of lead. Geez, you know, that was a bad mistake. It could have been a piece of gold. Uh, if this is a nugget, we are done for the day. As long as I get enough gas money. It's like another bullet fragment. Oh, wow. Wasn't even in the rock. All right, it's super windy, but I double checked or quadruple checked uh, this spot. Again, I found a little tiny piece. I 
think that's number four or five. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Four, I think. Uh, I'll count them later. Just tiny pieces. So I'm going to head down this trail. Check out this little cool pad that they made. They must have set up their dry washer right here. But yeah, that's a lot of work all the way down. But I'm really curious. I mean, I kind of want to grab a sample of this dirt and pan it out right now. Just to see. I mean, why not? So I think that's what I'm going to do as I, as I walk down this hill. Uh, detecting some nuggets, uh, hopefully. <laughs> as I'm walking down this mountain, this little hill anyway, I'm going to be uh, trying to detect a few more nuggets and eventually I'll make it back to the truck and I'm going to come back with a bucket. I'm going to grab some sample dirt from here. Maybe out of this tailings pile. Maybe out of the next one. That one's closer. I like that idea. <laughs> Anyways, we found gold nuggets all through up and all through down. We found gold nuggets all throughout it. So uh, they're in there. I'm really curious to see what happens once you get this wet and you pan it out. I probably should have already done that, but. This is gold prospecting. You win some, you lose some. You lose your mind a little bit. And you uh, get sunburnt a little bit. All right, this one sounds like a pretty decent nugget. It's a matter of getting it out. Let's make sure it's not in the loose area first. Hold on, I got a trick. Ta-da! You're only allowed to use a pick and a shovel. So here's the pick, here's the shovel. Sounds like there's something else here. I missed! Ooh! I got it! So I thought I had it. Come on. What? What are you? Maybe it just has a bunch of clay on it. Oh yeah. That's a pretty decent piece. For the day anyway. Whoa, whoa. That whole time, there's the truck. I walked all the way up that hill. And it was here the whole time. That's how my day went. But anyways, I gotta get some of that tailings pile over there. I wanna see how much gold is in that dirt. Hiroshi never called me, so I don't know where his spot is that he wants me to check out for him. But anyways, he gave me this idea here, which are these uh, bags he got at like Home Depot or something. I'm gonna fill these up with those some of that uh, tailings pile over there, and then pan it back at home. Because I'll tell you what, the sun has got me beat. I'm pretty interested to see if there's going to be any gold and what amount in these 
dry wash tailing piles. Maybe there'll be a few gold nuggets, who knows? As I'm filling these bags up, you can be letting me know what your idea is on how to give that one gram nugget away. Let me know in the comments how I should let that one gram nugget go. But the rule is, you have to be a subscriber and you have to leave a comment. And also you can be updated on the community page. What are you doing sitting there? Come on. I need some help with this, you know. I'm pretty tired. This thing's huge. I'm not gonna fill this whole thing up. All right, that's bag one. Look at the size of this. Quit sitting there. Come on, buddy. All right, here's what you do. All you gotta do is twist them up, tie them together, and throw them right over your shoulders. Should be a lot easier to carry this way. You know, it makes it really easy to carry when you're not carrying them. And I'm the one doing all the work. Just saying. By the way, bag one is in front of me, okay? Don't let me forget. All right, now that only the best of the best are still around, give me some ideas in order to give this one gram gold nugget away. Because I'm stumped. All I know is that in order to get it, you gotta leave a comment and you have to be a subscriber. I need ideas, I need ideas. Okay, so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bag. I already did one of them. I already classified one, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna classify those two bags into one bucket. And then I'm gonna run it through this little mini high banker. Now this is a little mini high banker called California High Banker. The manufacturer is Geo Sluice. It comes with a battery, but I rigged it up to an AC volt, or I, I rigged it up to AC. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pan it out up here, and then we'll see if there's any gold left over in all those tailing piles. Now this is the California Mini High Banker. The manufacturer is Geo Sluice, and it's a drop ripple sluice. I don't like to deal with mats too often, and this one has no mats whatsoever. And um, and it's by far one of the most underrated uh, mini high bankers on the market right now. This thing catches gold like you would not believe, and you don't have to deal with any mats, and it's surprisingly pretty affordable. Somebody tell me what this is. I know what it is. My weight. Nothing. Nothing yet. So far they did a pretty good job. Okay, so far, count number one. One little tiny flake. So far they did a really good job. 20 scoops of their tailings, maybe, with that tiny shovel. And so far, the count is one flake. All right, we got two. But you know what? These guys did a pretty good job dry washing. So far, only two little tiny pieces. You know, now that I think about it. So out of those two big bags, only two little tiny, tiny little flakes. They did a pretty good job, but that's after I classified it. I still have a pretty big bucket to go through. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make another video on that because I have a ton of rock to crush from that other area. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and crush this stuff up and see what comes out of it. So as you can see, I have a ton of rock to go through and I can't wait to crush that up and then just weigh out all the gold that's in there because I know there's gotta be a lot of gold, at least for me anyway. But anyways, these guys did a great job out there, whoever was dry washing. Uh, I only found two little flakes. You know, now that I think about it, I did add one thing in that video where I found that one gram gold nugget. And I'm really surprised that nobody actually caught it. 